It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X. Talk even. I am J Mike alongside me. Well, I guess I have two uh, things aside me now. Things. I have a kitty. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I was like, I don't know if, if I want to say two people and then I include the cat in there. And then, yeah. So, specifically, entities. Yeah. Two, two entities, I, we should say. One that, you know, uh, has a property of existing, unlike something that we like to talk about on the show. Um, and so, I'm extremely excited to announce uh, Katie Montgomery as my co-host today but not only for today uh as an official new host of talk heathen yeah so i wanted to point out before i uh give you the spotlight that unlike one of my uh or our uh I should say are now um hosts on the show who i'll leave nameless lloyd uh, i'm not gonna taunt you with mayonnaise or a substance that which you don't like because i don't Thank like ketchup you. and so if someone did that to me i'd feel like nauseous before every episode because i have a really weird thing with ketchup probably similar to the thing that you have with mayonnaise so i just want to texture. point out that i'm a better host than lloyd basically is the whole point yeah i mean obviously already yeah. i can sense that yeah, but like so. so is it for you is it texture or is it the taste or is it the combination um or the concept well i hope my brother's not listening <laughs> he's gonna crack up because if i don't give the right answers he's like you're you're lying you're lying um so I don't think it was any of those. I think maybe I smelled it and was like, ooh, I don't like that. And then my brother uh, would kind of picked on uh, the, the fact that I didn't like it a little bit. And then uh, he would trick He Actually, I don't know if you remember back in like the 90s, early 2000s, they came out with uh, like colored flavored ketchup. So it'd be yeah. like uh, purple Get green and flavor. Yeah, different color. Yeah. I don't know why it's a color flavored. But um, yeah, so you have like, you know, purple, green, all this stuff. And so he tricked me and he would do all these things. So it became <laughs> this like traumatic experience to like i didn't know what to trust when i would try a new uh, substance to the point where like i was afraid to try certain sauces on on just random things like it took in case me... it was ketchup yeah just in case it was it was in there someone would like break the news to me and then it would go against my principles you know it's like, like that everything is cake meme like you cut open this chair and instead of cake it's just ketchup and you'd be like i've been sitting on ketchup this whole time oh man i would uh, no. what is even real <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't oh no that's not i for think me. That that like that kind of like betrayal of what you know to be true is part of the reason why I hate mayonnaise because you're like that looks like a nice sandwich I'll buy that sandwich you take a bite into it you look to the ingredients didn't say it's got mayonnaise in sure. suddenly you're like choking on slime like it's disgusting so, yeah yeah it's an and exception why well, else and so I, I got a little biased because I agree like mayonnaise is gross so you know I wanted to, maybe we we just bond over that initially and then we have that uh. That, that connection and we can call out Lloyd in the process, which I think is a beautiful thing to do. Yeah, so, exactly. You know. So the trifecta of uh, bonding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, if you're not aware, uh, Talk Heathen is a product of the ACA, a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization dedicated to the promotion of positive atheism and separation of religion and government. Um, we have some awesome options for you if you don't like the pesky slow mode and you wanna help support us. Uh, multiple benefits there. You can go below the video and actually hit the join button for uh, becoming a member, um, as well as going to patreon.com slash talk heathen to me. And those would be direct ways to support us, uh, as well as probably the two of the best ways I would say one being just subscribing, like, you know, that gets you in the door, you can it's free, you don't have to, you know, you can revoke it at any time. I don't know why you, you would want to unless you know, Lloyd's propping up mayonnaise for Katie all the time. Um, but then you also have the fact that we have 
a fundraiser down below the live chat where 100% of the proceeds are going directly to the ACA. And YouTube is not taking that cut out. And if any of you guys uh, do YouTube or anything like that, then you 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 know how that how that works. So 100% proceeds really uh, beneficial for for us as well as uh, uh, say microphones chairs things all these types of things uh real like chairs it. not even ketchup chairs no not ketchup i was gonna i was about to say not as long as it's not ketchup chairs because then i don't <laughs> then i don't want your money um but yeah i mean it, well i guess honestly i think we could just get right into calls and uh, i don't know how you feel about that but we ha we have a few callers on the line which is which is nice i always like yeah that. i mean i'm ready i'm ready forever let's do it so we have eli you are on with katie and j mike and you want to talk about is it possible to have something that is eternal? Hi. Hi there. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. And, and that's that's pretty much the question. But real quick, I'm, I'm so nervous. Uh, and um, I, by the way, English is my second language. Um, sorry, you know, and uh, but I, I can explain you real quick to you guys within 60 seconds, you know, what I mean exactly with that. Good for him. Oh, sure. Yeah. Give us a background. About that question, and and yeah. don't, don't worry about, don't Pretty worry about your English. Cause you speak one more language than I do. So yeah. And also it sounds great. So yeah. <laughs> um, well, this, this is, well, this is my point or my idea. Um, uh, look, something silly, right? You just made my point. If, if I go to the freeway and then um, somebody tells me, uh, let's say there's a wall, you know, blocking the freeway and somebody tells me, Hey, this is the end of of uh, of everything of this road, or, or uh, not a road, excuse me, of everything, right? I mean, like, man, you see, like, give me a slash hammer and I take the wall, and this, you know, this thing is gonna keep going, it's gonna keep going. Uh, it, it wouldn't make sense if it's you know somebody say that. My point is, is a pop if if I go on a line out of this planet, keep going, you know, straight, not stopping. Is it possible that 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 I'm gonna go forever and, and never going to stop in any direction. I don't care in the universe. And if uh, somebody told me, "Oh, this is the end of this is, this is the end of everything," I'll be like, "What do you mean? It doesn't make any sense." Now, the the first option, or the the first thing is, it doesn't make any sense that I'm gonna keep going forever. Like, okay. And if somebody tells me, "Oh, it's the the this is the end of everything," I'll be like, "Dude, that must, makes no sense to me, or at least I, I I don't understand." So that that's the question based on. So I, I think this is like, a, could be a very advanced physics question. And I don't actually know if humans know the answer when we're talking about the universe. Um, but I think it's very easy to imagine that the universe is just like a sphere and it's just like getting bigger. Um, but that, that isn't, um, I know that there's lots of different conceptualizations of what shape the universe is, but from what I've heard, just imagining, an, imagining it as a sphere is like incorrect. Um, because space is like, we often just imagine everything works like Newtonian mechanics, like, you know, we sort of interact with in real life. You know, if you set something off in a straight line, it just travels in a straight line. Um, but like space and on huge scales, uh, physics has got all these weird quirks. And especially when you end up getting like gravity works in a really weird way that just doesn't seem intuitive to us in certain like circumstances. Um, so I think that from what I've heard, if you were to just set off into the universe, you wouldn't reach like an edge. And in fact, it might not really make sense to describe the edge of the universe as a concept. Um, so uh, another way I've heard this is if you imagine that the like universe was two dimensional instead of three dimensional, and it was like on the surface of a balloon, if you started off in a place and you just kept going, um, you wouldn't ever reach an edge in any direction you you went. In fact, you would end up getting back to where you started, even though you just went in a straight line. But you could also then blow up this balloon. And although the actual universe itself would just be like the surface of the balloon, like 2D, it expanding is in an, like an extra dimension. And so it would be every all the distance between every single point on the surface of this balloon would be getting further away. And you could still travel in a, like a straight line between them, but somehow it's getting bigger. Um, however, all of that stuff I've just said, like, I'm not a physicist, and this is like stuff I remember reading a while ago, so chat probably going mad telling me an idiot, but I think, um, 
is there an edge of the universe might not really even be a sensible question. Um, but yeah. again, just to like go back to your like highway example, if you knock like, you know, you knock down the end of the wall at the end of the highway and it just goes off into the desert and you keep going, eventually you're going to get to the sea. And maybe you could get in a boat and you could just keep going. You're not ever going to get to the edge of the earth. You'll just eventually get back to where you started. Um, and so perhaps that's uh, another way of conceptualizing it. I don't know what you think, Mike. Do you do you know much physics? Well, uh, no. So I'm I'm I, I like you know f more so like I like science things like that. I, I definitely have more heavy into like philosophy of science or uh, these types of things that look at it from an outside view. For me, it seems more appropriate because I know that I don't have the kind of uh, background for that. I've um, on on one one of the sh shows that I do, I've talked to a, a black hole cosmologist um, who's come on, and he's given me different opinions than other cosmologists. Uh, and so, from my perspective, it seems like if you say, let's look at Sean Carroll's debate with William Lane Craig. Uh, it, in that debate, he he says at one point he goes, you know, it took me thirty like thirty seconds to go on Google, or I think he says thirty minutes. I found seventeen different. Uh, cosmological models that incorporate some infinity or um, eternal state, I guess. Um, and so wow. my my thing is that, look, you could look at like someone like Aristotle, who's like, there is no beginning. And then you can look at other people that that go against that. It seems to be a lot of that's up in the air. And then we're also dealing mm -hmm. with the observable universe, which is a whole other factor, uh, from my opinion, that that, sh that matters. I'm more so wondering what the implications are for you. Like, what is it about this? Like, what is this thought leading you to? Because we could sit here and I guess the point of me pointing out different perspectives is to say we could do that all day long, right? Like we, we could just kind of shoot the shit on what we think, but what is the implication that you're getting from it? And where is that leading you? Right. Thank you for asking that actually. Um, you know what, according to what you said, what I heard too, um, that points it to that you gotta be. I don't know if it's gonna be the right word, you know, uh, maybe, maybe in, a, in, a, in a question. Uh, but I think you gotta be a forever thing uh, because I'm 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 going with the idea like you know nothing is gonna nothing is gonna create something. You know, for example, so you gotta be something in there. And the, in this case, it'll be, it makes more sense for me that it's been for forever. Once again, the question is, if that means, or, or, or do you guys believe that there's something eternal up there? Whatever that means, because once again, I don't think nobody knows. Uh, well, maybe you, just, you, just, you just said it right there, right? You said, I don't think anybody knows. So I think it's a level of hubris for me to come on and say, well, I know I have all the answers. My experience of looking things up and my secondhand knowledge of, you know, reading certain things in philosophy or physics as somebody who's a programming major, right? Like, I think it would be ill of me or a little bit of hubris to say that I know. Uh, are there ones that I lean to? I, you know, I don't even know because um, the thing, the perspective that I that I fear on this is starting from a position of believing, like, say, a God exists first and then working backwards, right? So, like, I always accuse certain uh, Christian philosophers of being a Christian first and a philosopher second. Um, for me, these types of conversations were really hard to get. Like, it, it really broke me down to why I didn't know what I believed. And so I don't like the idea of starting potentially with something first. This is why I'm asking you the question of, like, what are the implications? Because I'm wondering if you're starting from a position and then working this there as opposed to just kind of throwing your hands up and saying, look, I don't know. I'm going to wait until science or, or something has the answer. To me, that's more satisfying because that's me just being honest with myself. But I'm wondering if you kind of have some prior thing there that's um, that's prompting this. Like, do you, do you, are you a theist? Do you believe in God, or, or are you working from that perspective? Actually, no, none, none of that. Um, actually, uh, actually, I came with a for everything now. You know that I have uh, that, that I heard you guys that that'll be pointing me to to you know to that conclusion so far. That that is something out there, whatever that means. That it's a forever thing. Why? Because it just makes sense to me. Like, like I want to go in circle, but like, like I said, there's nothing that that it can appear out of nowhere. So it gotta be something out there. That I don't know. May, may, I mean, I just pointed in a question. I'm, I'm pointing like there's an aid. Uh, what's it called? A uh, 
a god or anything. I don't, I don't even know what that means at all. You know, a god. I, I know just people came out with, with uh, you know, those those uh, names, but I have no clue. So that's where I'm coming from. Just asking questions. You know? <laughs> Let's sure. see what, what yeah, all these, think- you know, guide me to. Oh, and I, I know, I'm not going to make any conclusions, conclusions, right? Because who am I? And, and I don't, I'm not even uh, finished my college, but, but, you know, like I said, all, all these have to guide me to a, uh, a what do we call not conclusion, but you know, something that I can think. Oh, this maybe this could be it more than this other thing. Uh, yeah, I, well, I have a, a fear that like you're putting way too many steps. You're putting what the horse before the cart, so to speak, or, or whatever the, the saying is, um, you, or the cart before the horse. Wow, I'm, I'm yeah, horse dyslexic. before the cart so, sounds yeah, that's, that correctly. sounds yeah, that's, that's <laughs> something I would want to do. I think right. <laughs> Um, I also thought that a crab was a or a lobster was a crab or a crab was a lobster today. So there's there's and the crab been full of lobster mate. That's so yeah, fun. it's been one of those kind of days. Um, yeah, I just worry because like you, you're saying like, and I hopefully I'm hearing you right. You're saying like there has to be this something, but like I don't know why you're to that perspective when we're still trying to look at like, okay, is it eternal? Is it not? Now, what's the explanation for that? Is there an explanation? Is it just a brute fact? Is it the fact that the universe has just always been there? Well, then it's necessary. And then if it's necessary, like, I don't know what I'm using to explain, right? Like, if we use the variable S and we just say S is necessary, well, I'm not going to say like, oh, well, R explains S, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. So it could just be the case that once you find out some eternal state, that that's it, right? That's just the way it is. I don't know why we kick the can down the road to to add anything else. Um, I'm not saying you're doing that, but that, that's why, at least for this type of a call, I'm so comfortable just saying, I don't know, because this isn't you know my field of study. That's something that I will leave to the experts to provide models for where, at which they could you know produce uh, future predictions and things like that that we can test. I think, uh, but maybe I think Katie often, has a perspective. I was different. just thinking there's often a temptation to think, oh, well, there's something here and something must have caused that. Oh, and you know, then we can just say, well, there must be a cause for that. And and that's like a maybe kind of a, a sim I didn't want to say simple thought pattern. I'm not accusing anyone of having like too simple thoughts, but I think that's you know a thing that you often can think about a lot of things. Just in when you encounter something in your life, you're like, how did that get here? Why is that here? But I mean, this the classic here is if something caused, you know, the universe or created its eternal state or whether it's eternal or not. It can be very easy to be like, oh, what caused this? Oh, it must have been a force, some property or God or whatever. And then to just kind of like dust your hands off and be like, cool, we're done here. But then like, what caused that? Or why was that caused? And then maybe what caused that? And why was that caused? And it's not actually, it it can feel like, oh, but we, it's a question we need to ask what caused the universe. But you don't then think, well, need to ask the next question what caused the thing that caused the universe and what caused the thing that caused the thing that caused the thing that caused the universe and so on and you i mean it is just an infinite list of completely unknowable questions um we don't even need know if we need to ask those questions because we don't even know you know what happened before the universe or if that's even a sensible concept so um ends up just being like i understand the curiosity of like oh, well, what happened at the start of the universe and why did that happen for sure? And the answer is just like, don't know yet. Hopefully we find out before I die because I'm really interested. Um, but to say like, oh, it must have has a, had a cause then kind of opens up, well, the whatever cause that must have had a cause, whatever cause that must have had a cause. And it's not really a sensible assertion. It must have had a cause. Yeah, well, and I, I also have a problem with that. Like, I know this isn't what, what Eli is... Um presenting or at least it doesn't seem but you know mm. people that go into like the you know especially when you get like the first premise of the cause or something like that where or the column where you can look at like you know a causal principle and say like this is the way that we look at causation then you extrapolate that the whole eternity thing um it's funny when people use that because to me it's like well if you're kind of denying um you know causal fenotism or is that to say that you know there's uh you know, if, if you want or if you want to state that there is some point at which there's a beginning, I guess is what I should say. Um, it's weird that you also have a doctrine at which, like, if I accept Jesus into my heart, you know, then 
I live eternally. So I'm like, how does that work? Like, it's like eternity now exists. Do I not, do I burn in hell for a finite time? So like, <laughs> I really like looking at when we look at the implications of things, what we're committing ourselves to, right? Because if you called in as a Christian and you're like, you're trying to say, well, there, you know, there is no eternity and you want that to prop that up as an argument to get you to God and the Kalam or something like that. Uh, well, then I just have to look at, okay, well, what does that commit you to? Well, that commits you in the worldview that you hold um, that I'm just going to burn in hell for a finite amount of time or that when you know I accept Jesus into my heart, he's not actually giving me eternal life, right? That seems to go against that principle, right? And so I would look at, the reason why I'm saying this is I would look at what it is that you think about this topic, right? Um, you know, because I think it's natural to shift one way or the other. But under what basis are you doing that? Are you doing that to fit some narrative that you believe beforehand? Doesn't sound like you do. Uh, at least I, I might have missed something. But, um, and, and I think if you work from that framework, then then you're doing it the right way, right? You're not going from what I said earlier as a Muslim first, philosopher second, Christian first, mm -hmm. philosopher second, atheist first, philosopher second. You should really look at these things from a uh, just from a skeptical approach. That's why I like to consider myself a skeptic in that sense. Is like. I can start from that and then if my mind's changed i'm still a skeptic even if it's changed uh you know maybe a bigger uh worldview thing and you know in, in the in, in what i believe in the set of all all those types of things i guess but yeah i don't know i don't know if that helps at all but i would just not start with you know some implication first and then i think you're 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 on the right track of talking about this but at the same time these answers aren't going to be solved by mere armchair thought it's going to take actual evidence and empirical basis to get a prediction and a model and things like that. And it might be that that's just impossible. Yeah. There, were, yeah. there were some things we could just never have any evidence for. So we might just never know. No, no. And, and, and excuse me. I, I, and I, I just refer to this uh, uh, scientists um, that, that even if, if we can, you know, figure it out, you know, everything, every single thing in the universe, uh, just real quick, I put it, I put there uh, maybe for later or a bit later. Um, Adam is, is are atoms are, are eternal, for example. But but even if we can figure it out, everything in this universe, what are the causes? We have no idea. We cannot say anything because we have no idea. And and, and I'm with that, you know. But uh, the farthest, the farthest, I guess, from what I heard, that this universe is going to die. Well, I don't, I don't know what sense it so means to talk about like a cause of some, like the the universe. If you're if the one of the uh, rivaling hypotheses can be just that the universe is some necessary brute fact that's always existed right so it's like it seems there's a lot of different ways that we can go about it um from that perspective right yeah but once again uh, th th when you guys when you guys will say that that something uh, uh, quote unquote okay uh uh make all this happen for something um and where is that coming from you know what i mean <laughs> yeah but that, so that that, i get that that's just a to me that's always like kicking the can down the road we now have some thing um that caused it and then now you might extrapolate the idea that that thing is eternal or maybe it's outside of space and time and then and then it's like you've now just inserted more problems than you were trying to solve in the first place Right. And that to me seems to be kind of irresponsible, at least epistemically irresponsible. It seems that um, we shouldn't just keep kicking the can because then now you find yourself in the, the same problem. Um, of sure. Like, well, sure. is that, that thing just necessarily yeah. brute? Is that a necessary thing that just exists? Well, then I don't see why the, the naturalist can't make a similar argument, but remove one extra thing, right? Um, one extra uh entity from it to me that seems to be like just principle of parsimony or occam's razor right i'm not going to just add some unnecessary thing there uh or or just well, you know, you well there has to be something because that might might just oh might be asking the wrong question yeah it's, it's like a, a bad assumption to say there must be something without you know having some kind of evidence for why there must be it just it sounds like well i can't imagine anything different so therefore it must be Do you have I'm, any, uh, I'm with you guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so um, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that helps, but if if you uh, want to call back and we can go more more in depth on it, I'm definitely not into the physics as much as uh, like some people I know. 
uh, who who love that stuff. I I love more like the biology, uh, philosophy, scripture type of thing. But um, but yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. It's something that I guess I'm more comfortable just throwing my arms up and saying, look, this is a clearly t equals zero, or if that makes sense, is up for grabs. Uh, you know, by the uh, astrophysicist or cosmologist. Yeah, and, and now that real quick that you guys. But mentioned kind of sort of a, something about the the Bible. I don't think the Bible can explain any of this. They're, all the stories point to something else that have nothing to do with with uh, you know the the real world as we know it. But uh, so I wouldn't consider it. All right. Well, th well, thank That's you. Uh, we're gonna. We're... Yeah. Thanks for calling. Thank you, guys. Hey, have a good one. You too. Thank you. I was uh, I was almost expecting that call to uh, do a more kind of philosophical angle because my first thought for is that can something be eternal was like what does eternal mean does that mean lasts forever and has always existed or does it mean like exists out of the concept of time for example the sure. number one like did the could the concept of one exist before the universe? I mean, does maths just always exist? Maybe maths exists outside the universe because it's, you know, just concept. Say that even though there was yeah. a God, there was only one God, or maybe there was five gods. But like this concept of numbers doesn't really have like time to it. Sure. And it's Which no is an argument for a lot of, you know, Platonists or people that think that these abstract yeah. objects are like real entities. Yeah. Um, right. But to me, it's like when you, you know, if you don't have the particular like or the the object right like a coke can i don't really know what one reference is outside of space and time right it seems right. to have like a designator to it um and it seems to only be in virtue of some concrete object uh to apply it to so i yeah i'm but i think that's a great you know that's a um a great point to bring up right and especially when you talk about what it, you know whether this exists outside time to me i i'm inclined to say i don't even know what that means especially when you talk about something creating or doing something outside of that because you're using a verb which implies time yeah right so yeah. i'm always like how does that work is it like you know and then you're using the same causal principles that we know um right like i think aristotle had as like efficient material i, I like i like to bog it down less and just say you know there's like if i sculpt a uh, a statue or something like that, right? There's me and then there's the material at which I do it from. But to talk about that outside of that, those physical uh, laws, which instantiate causality from my perspective, because uh, I look at that as like an emergent thing, it seems weird to now like apply that principle outside of where it's most likely emergent from, right? It seems to like sure. push it back. And so I have a lot of problems with with this topic, but I also don't really know where I sit where I sit because it's, it's just yeah. This feels like everywhere. something I could just keep arguing about because I feel like at one point there was zero statues, and then there, now there's one statues, and that kind of implies all the maths that we need. So if there were there's either always been one universe or there sure. was not one universe, and then there was one universe, and then we can count that from outside, and yeah. then numbers have always existed, and so has the whole concept of maths. Oh, and then yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, and that gets into the whole philosophy thing of necessary and modal, you know, yeah. modal perspectives and all that. But yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole. Um, anyway, uh, I said it before, but I want to say it again. Below the live chat, uh, you can actually go uh, check out the fundraiser that we're doing. That hundred percent of the proceeds go to the ACA. None of that is taken out by YouTube. Um, so we really appreciate if you go and do that. You can also support us. Uh, in your car or in the gym or wherever you can't actually look at us uh, by going to tiny.cc slash AEN podcasts and uh, get all of the different shows that we do there, which will be Talk Heathen, Truth Wanted, Atheist Experience, uh, Secular Sexuality, uh, not the new nonprofits, uh, which, by the way, I've been told has gotten over 9,000 subscribers now. So you should go check them out and uh they actually air a uh, new episode will air today at i always get the times messed up because i'm on the east uh but it will be 4 p.m eastern 3 p.m central um i'm not doing any other time zones because i'm math nope no 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 
not not my thing um maps doesn't exist on the east coast yeah right yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's not part of that causal series it's outside of time um <laughs> You can also support us, uh, which is one of my favorite ones to talk about, is the Facebook group. Uh, I believe the link is now changed. It's a fan-run Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash talk heathen uh, uh, FG. And so if you go uh, go to that fan-run site, you can act, or group, I should say, um, you can actually interact with a lot of other people, continue the discussion, and uh, reach out to people in the community. That's kind of how I got where I'm at in the in the community. And um, yeah, so I just, I highly suggest that as well as the discord at which you can um, come after. I think we're, you're doing the discord conversation after, right? The, yeah. Yeah. yeah we can so do you, that, doing some chats. Yeah. yeah you get me and Katie. Questions. Yeah. We will, you get both of us today. So uh, join us after the, the show at uh, say about three thirty, three forty-five. whenever we end, go straight to discord, which is at tiny.cc uh, ACA discord uh, or ACD discord, I should say and uh, join us there. But let's go ahead and move on to another yeah, call. Cool. Um, we have an atheist, Paul, in North Carolina, who wants to talk about why theists like the quantum consciousness theories. Go for it. How are you doing, Paul? Hi. I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, little stage fright, but I got to and anonymity to, to to shelter me <laughs> hey you're you're fine i'm i'm fumbling words today where we can do this all together we will we'll all be in a in a in a mess together how about that <laughs> i didn't even know what a crab and a lobster was earlier so i'm all i'm all over the place <laughs> um so um one of my one of my uh favorite deeper introductions into uh uh physics was this like late 70s uh book called dance of the Wu Li masters and uh one of the ways in which it, it appealed to me is that uh i was raised uh by uh hippie sikhs that are more i don't know they're uh they're 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 secular and humanist uh they passed both of my parents but uh you know uh, still talk about them as if they're as active um um, uh, and so it, it appealed to me because it, it, it kind of runs down a, a kind of comparative, uh, world religion analysis of the Upanishads, uh, in India and, um, uh, uh, and modern developments with quantum physics in the past century, how, uh, quantum physics has thrown basic assumptions on their ear and, uh, it emphasized uh, it was, you know, and it was written, I think, in the late 70s. It certainly emphasized uh, what I would currently, I think most physicists would agree is uh, kind of a, it's extremely theoretical or it's attempted mysticism, you know, tapping the creative sub creative genius with with highly speculative models, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um... But quantum. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, continue. Well, quantum consciousness, Leonard Susskind's quantum consciousness, uh, it's been getting some some various YouTube uh, play, and I learned about it much much later, frankly, from Leonard's uh, uh, YouTube lectures. Um, but uh, uh, well, can you can you help that, me? Can you help me out there? Is, is that because uh, I, I, I'm not familiar off the top of my head? Does that have to do with like the observer effect or things like that, or what, what is that specifically? In, in a sense, it's been kept very, very nicely, uh, very nicely workable with the with the current uh, with the standard model. Um, so, but so has string theory, and a lot of people are like, yeah, and that's almost like physics mysticism, you know. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, or, or what's the, I could say, the, or like, until it gets proved, the main assertion? Really falsifiability. You know? what, what's like the, the main assertion? What's like the main assertion here? Um, like. Uh, is is the okay, main assertion so, like string theory? Therefore, the universe is a brain. Is that is that kind of what's going on? I would say that it it that would be deceptive to reduce it like that. And I wouldn't say that it's string theory. Therefore, the universe is a brain. Um, it, it's uh, much more God of, God of the gaps in its in its in its theoretical its true theoretical kind of form, not like its abuses, you know. <laughs> Well, sure, because I mean, theoretical, we're, we're, but it's hypothetical, not theoretical. 
hypothetical. We don't have evidence. There's no – Susskind's been looking for um, nanotubules in our neurons because we've hit this wall with AI where we did blue brain models, perfect ones, and they don't live they, or they don't think rather. Um, that might be we just haven't made a, a cluster big enough yet. But uh, a lot of physicists are like – have been taking the – rabbit hole of of the interconnection between consciousness and um and uh the collapse of superposition and so bell uh suskin and and some mainstream physicists have been exploring the root of saying if we say that the collapse of the waveform into a point location is consciousness even an electron in a vacuum with no interactions will collapse it's superposition once every billion or so years. I don't. I, I'm not gonna. But it's you know some huge amount of time. Um, and so, well, if we well, so, are, so yeah. a, a lot of a lot of this is gonna. Yeah. Let me let me cut you off real fast because a lot of this uh, is stuff that will go way over my head. Uh, I don't pretend to know quantum mechanics and any level of expertise. But what I will say is, it seems to be. I mean, it seems to be pretty point blank none of the mathematics are following this idea of consciousness uh, or quantum consciousness. No, all the mathematics right? are following it. Uh, I would no, disagree. Uh, to me, to me, so I don't know, know much, but it's from the conversations I've had on, on it, it doesn't seem that that is a shared... How can you say that if you just said you don't understand the argument being no, no. made? L well, listen. It's a big because, stream. L listen, listen. Okay. I don't, I don't want to have to mute you. What I'm trying to say is that from and I, this is why I preface I, that I don't know is that from the people that I've talked to that do know, um, my co-host uh, on one of my shows, brother is a quantum physics teacher. He's been on our show a bunch, Thanks. and then my co-host is a, a Bean PhD does a great in philo philosophy. Bean and f when we ask when I ask this question, it seems that this is not really a um, this isn't anything that has the same type of work and, and mathematics or models that, that you have beyond that, right? There's the issue, a, it does. The issue is, it, well, no, no, hold on. Is it, is it using, is it using the observer? So, hold on. Is it using the observer? Do, do they cite the observer effect in, in anything that you're reading? The observer effect is, uh, I, I suppose, um, an element, but it far more relies on the Copenhagen, and then it transitioned. You could see they transitioned it nicely into uh, uh, quantum chromodynamics, and and the current you know quantum uh, virtual particle fields, and it works. They're they're currently working it because they were the the pioneers of the um, Suskin was, and a large part of the team that pioneered the uh, holographic principle. So, so um, I, I gotta, I gotta stop you, Paul. This, Paul, this I, 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 gotta, very, I gotta stop like, you because it feels like I'm just being lectured right now and like told these things, but I don't like see any end point to where you're going. And no offense, my patience is kind of running out because like, what, what's the goal? Like, what are you, what are you? Oh, you just, you just think that the root of the issue is in the wrong direction. This is a working mysticism, but it's just, it's a highly, it's a highly speculative. When you say there's not the math doesn't work with it, no, that's the only thing that works conveniently with it. The issue is that we don't have nanotubules. We don't know that human beings well, are. When, well, we no, no. Say, when we say the maths works to show consciousness, I mean, what's the maths of consciousness? I don't, I yeah. don't, I don't know how that makes sense. Oh, uh, they like, defined it. They defined we, we, it. We can, I, we can model like a human well, brain. In some I think way. he, what he's and trying, that, I think what he's trying to say. Um, from my perspective, is more so is more so touching on underdetermination and, and uh, philosophy of science, where you can take kind of some idea and rival it with the same data or evidence and say, well, this is you know this we could have some alternate uh, yeah. hypothesis to rival that. The problem is is that the difference between the two is that isn't generating any future predictions, right? It's like I can do that anytime right. I want. Right. I can just yeah. So then we're in agreement, but I don't really know what the point of the conversation is because we're just going to agree with each other, and I don't really know what, what good that does. Well, I mean, yeah, we can come up with like a, a different model that fits the data for absolutely anything, can't we? Whatever, whatever function of anything you have, yeah. you can come up with. Quantum consciousness. Quantum consciousness seems like bullshit until somebody can actually demonstrate that it's reflective of reality. Now, now, where do we where do we go from here? Yeah, it demonstrates that it's reflective of reality in a way that's discernible from it not being reflective of reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, 
Well, not really. <laughs> I have to listen back to understand it. But hey, Paul, I'm I'm gonna move on. I'm move on to calls because I got some theist callers and get that. But I appreciate appreciate the call. I just this is not my pay grade uh, at all to um to, to to go over quantum physics. I just feel just disingenuous doing that, to be honest. So, um, but I appreciate your work and the things you're looking into it. And um, yeah, I just don't, I don't really know what to oh, add. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a couch jockey uh, enthusiast, sir. Don't don't uh. Don't go attributing uh, authority or something in order to to my 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 personal interests. All right, well we'll move on. I don't I don't really know I don't really know how to respond, but, um, yeah, but thanks, we'll, Paul. We'll, we appreciate it, Paul. I perhaps I'll go read more about it. Um, I don't I I feel like. Uh, there was just like some pieces. Here's a name of something. Here's a name of something. Yeah, I mean, to me, it just seemed. It just seems like I'm just wanted to say things for the sake of saying things, and I apologize, yeah. Paul, but I just don't like. I just, I don't know that I. I don't. I don't know what value it does for for the audience, for myself, for Katie, um, especially when I can see that there is, theist Mike in yeah, California who would like to talk about the Kalam, and a true infinity is not possible. These are things that I might be able to add some things to, but. Let's hope really it doesn't want... go back into more physics. Yeah, let's stay away from quantum hey, physics. Hey, if you, Katie. Can. Hey, you Hi. Know. Hey, guys. Uh, are you familiar with what an actual potential infinity dichotomy would be? I'm sorry, no. I didn't. What did you say? The dichotomy or the uh, difference between a potential infinite and an actual infinite or an infinite yeah. by su successive addition yeah I, are you asking me to tell yeah. you that distinction i know craig makes the distinction and some other people make distinctions on potential and actual but i the one thing i really don't like is when someone tries to go do you understand this just tell me your point because i'm not playing like i'm not having it's not a yeah, test no, 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 i'm not i'm not going to take a test i do I'm way too many of that, that for school so. i don't know what you mean by those phrases so build an argument by explaining them yeah, it's a, okay, well, the argument would be, um, basically, it's going to, I'm going to put it in, I'm not going to put it in the regular deductive form. You can look that up online because I want to keep it more conversational uh, so we don't get in the weeds with esoteric concepts. And by the way, Jay Mike, I'm the guy that brought you that theory of everything intelligibility argument. I, I don't know if you remember that call. I'm not, back. I don't think, so. maybe I do. Uh, they'll probably ring a bell. I'm, I'm really with, bad uh, with memory. You and Eric. The one with you and Eric, and I kind of fooled you, and I said, oh, yeah, we came to a pantheism because it was kind of a Spinozan argument uh, for the universe is God, the universe is a necessary being. But anyways, yeah, I, do you remember that call or no? I talk with a lot of people on Discord and calls yeah, here. Yeah, no, I, guess, I got you. Yeah, at the end, of it, the end of it, I said it's getting esoteric, and then you guys, I got off the line, you guys were talking about how, you know, it's uh, that you wanted to keep things more on a, a level that, that everybody could understand. So yeah, they basically right, yeah. it says that the reason that you can't have the reason that you can't have a past infinite, like an eternal past infinite, like some people think, oh, the B theory means that like there's no time and it's eternally past, sure. is because of of uh, the argument from successive addition, and I think that's the truest argument to follow because it's the mathematical argument. You can have, you know, an infinite as it approaches a limit, like in calculus. You can have an infinite series, like you, you learn about when you're studying calculus. Or you can have a potential infinite, which is the only real infinite. It, it's never ending. You never get to the infinite. So that's why it can't be passed, because you never get to the now. And that, to me, that's like really intuitively clear in that argument. I've never had anyone been able to, to uh, challenge me on that and, and change well, my mind. Sure, the, the distinction, like. well, I said the, the distinction on potential and actual, I'm very skeptical on, and, and the idea of that when you set up this potential versus an actual, I'm wondering like no, but no, how, no, no, no. How, how it can ever. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll finish my response and then you, you, can, you can talk after me if you want to do it that way. Go for it. Is that okay? So yeah, that's why I'm pausing. Go ahead. Cool, awesome. So um, my, I said my worries about this is like, so are you coming from? Because I need to know your background. Are you coming from a Christian perspective? Or a the, yeah. uh, what what theist perspective are you, are you coming from? <clears throat> so I'll be honest with you, bro. I'm coming from from a guy 
that just wants to try to understand the nature of the universe sure. to understand if if there sure. is a it's, God just, it's just a yes or no are you a christian it's just yes or no yeah. yes why, yeah um i'd rather i i am a christian yeah full on okay cool so so this this is i don't know if you're familiar with like uh Graham Oppie. I really like the approach of comparing like what it is that you think and then seeing how that either works. Like so yeah, I think the role I'm, of art I think the role of arguments make make I'll finish. Um I think the role, I'll finish. The role of arguments are you gonna are you gonna let me talk? Oh yeah please. Okay. So the the role for arguments it seems that have most value, at least from my perspective, seems to be that you can uh, look at, see so your position, right? And you make a distinction between potential and actual infinities. And maybe you can insert right. where this isn't an issue for you. But when you're denying an infinite, like, will I, am I not going to burn in hell forever? Or if I don't accept Jesus into my heart, is that not truly right. eter eternal love? No, because it seems worry. to commit you to that now. That. Yeah. Don't worry about eternal hell. Don't worry about that, bro. It's not no, 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 no. I, I don't do worry, worry about, about that. Don't I, worry. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't. It's not about worrying about that. I'm saying when you come in with an argument about infinities don't exist, right? But then, like, I'm told if I accept Jesus in my heart that I'll live eternally. I'm curious on where that, where the, the foundations of your religion go out the door in favor of the philosophical arguments you've applied after the fact of your belief. Okay, I mean, support your support your claims now. It's not about supporting my claims. I'm asking you, like, if you, so if, if an actual infinity exists, then I'm not going to eternally burn in hell forever, right? I never said you were, and I, I think that's a false concept that human beings have brought into our. Do you have eternal life or not, as a Christian? There is a future potential. It's a yes or it's a yes or no question. I just answered it. It's a yes. Okay, so then, so then help. Infinite. Okay, so then help me out with with the distinction on why I should care about the the potential um, as opposed to the what I would consider infinity just being this concept, right? That we use. Whereas now I see like you have this dichot or this this distinction between potential and actual. But it seems that if anything's an actual infinity, it's the thing you believe in as a Christian is having eternal life. I don't know whatever executes as an actual infinity at that point. And if you deny that. It seems weird that you're denying the exact principle that you're calling in about. Okay, just clarify. I'm following, but I, I'm, it's not clicking for me. Please. You you believe infinities? You believe actual infinities do not exist, right? Isn't God eternal? Yes. This is this is what I'm trying to run him through, um, right? This this yeah. Like this argument you, commits. God has always it. existed. I mean, that's that's like the premise of Christianity is that God. It's always existed and always will that's exist. World, yeah. But you're yeah. saying that that's not possible because then we wouldn't have got to now. Yeah, and so that's what I'm trying to show him is that his the, the philosophical argument that he's trying to use to prompt to prompt up his argument or good arguments for his belief is actually putting his foot in his mouth by denying something that's fundamental Called to the religion, Christianity, which is yeah. yeah, which so um, I think it's Alex Malpass and Morrison have a, a really good paper on this, uh, that, that this well, argument I, I, runs I, I, in the future I, I, as well. Right. Can I, can, can I uh, put in my counter rebuttal? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. 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 No, I've read, uh, uh, Malpass and Morrison on, on the Dresky problem. That's an old objection from 1965. It didn't fly then. And it doesn't now. They just, they had, there's a paper, a recent paper on this and, and, no, this is. Yeah, I, I, would, told you, I I'd, I'd read contact read Joe Schmidt or other people that that actually have these conversations, and they're agnostic, and they do this from a different. Joe doesn't uh, impress me that much, really, to be honest. It's not about whether it impresses you. It sounds like you're just emotionally upset that this is a, a commitment to a principle at which you want people to believe God exists, but it's just you sticking your foot in your mouth. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. You know. No gaslighting. So you haven't. It's not gaslighting. Just show me where, where the problem from, of my objection is. Like, where, yeah, why is that not a problem? You know, I, I don't. I haven't read this paper and I haven't uh, encountered this distinction before, but it seems to me you're just coming in and you're saying, I think God is eternal, but I also think nothing can be eternal. I mean, that, that seems like, you know, there doesn't need to be impressed by papers or anything. I think it's kind of even simpler than that. Like, that's a contradiction, isn't it? If God's been around forever, but you're saying we can't, the idea of time forever 
in the past doesn't work because we would have not, never got to now, then the Lord of non-contradiction. It's you know I'm let, Katie. No human mind can try to solve this equation completely. The real question is, do we have an avenue? What does that mean? Why? What does I mean? Why are you interrupting? You, does that just mean there's not a solution? I mean, no human mind can solve can like resolve a equals not a, and we could say, oh, maybe God can resolve it, but actually. It just is a contradiction, isn't it? It's just false. I agree. I agree. No human mind can fathom the infinite. So what I'm telling you is we do have an avenue for a universal mind. I can use my veridical experiences that I think correspond to reality to bolster my hypothesis that my consciousness can link to that eternal re reality. I may not know like that's, my... That's a lot of what, like, I feel like you're jumping ahead a bit. Like we're still... I'm just trying to bring back to this this one claim where you've come in and said time can't go backwards forever because if that was the case then we would have never got to now like just say that's a, a premise that i accept which i'm not convinced of but i will just accept it for now you're also premising that god has existed forever so and then god created the universe at some point but it would we would have never got to now because we've just accepted the premise that if time goes backwards forever we can never get to now Right. Like that, so that's a contradiction. Whether you're connecting your mind to the global universe or not, like that's right. So what? Like one of those two premises is false. Either God hasn't existed forever, or time can go backwards forever. No, because God is being itself. He goes beyond. What does that mean, though? What does that mean? It, like, it did God did did time has God existed for all time, like infinite time backwards? Or, or did God start existing? If he had a start to his existence... People tell me that God is eternal. When I was five years yeah, old... Yeah, but people tell me lots of things about God. I'm, I'm asking what... Like, there's a contradiction here. Yeah. And, I, like, you need to resolve it. Yeah, yeah. I'll address the contradiction. Okay. Okay? So, I think... And I thought this when I was, like, five years old. I think the null state is basically are you guys still there my screen yeah yeah we're, we're, we're still waiting. here we're waiting You're... i'm ready for this no yeah. state okay so anyways long story short the way it, 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 this is underdetermined we've got the it's called uh Hempel's dilemma it's basically what you're using to say you know it's, this is impossible and that's impossible we, it's underdetermined blah 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 so yeah, it is, okay? I'm just asking, we all need to keep an open mind. And I don't mean to, like, I'm not... I'm, Wait, what's I'm the, open, what's so I'm, the I've got an open mind to I've got an open mind to either one of your premises. Yeah, you, what's the like, maybe God, Maybe God has existed forever, or maybe time can't yeah. go back forever. I, I, I could accept either one of those, but I can't accept them both right. because they are logical contradictions of each right. other. No, you're right. You're right. Now you're at the... And that is the paradox, right? That it's is, just wrong. <laughs> like paradox kind of hides how it's a contradiction. Yeah, we're 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 showing you that I, I don't have to repeat myself. We're, we're showing you that the argument you're using to 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 prompt up, right? Like you want us to believe you're you're calling this. There's viewers. There's like over a thousand viewers watching. Um, right? You, you can convince some people, right? And then you come in and you present a principle that is counterintuitive the foundations of your religion right because then i no longer have to worry about eternal hell i just have to worry about finite hell and i don't have to worry about like in the, it's a lie to say that in, in the bible that, that I, if i accept jesus into my heart that i will live eternally through jesus because i won't because the 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 initial thing that you got me to believe in i have to sacrifice the fact that oh i can't accept those things or they have to be finite right you can't have your, your metaphysical cake and eat it too you just can't sorry right. I like the idea of the bible saying and if you don't accept Jesus in your heart, you will go to hell for a finite amount of time. <laughs> no, I Are don't gonna, think that's intimidating. I don't think that I don't think my individual conscious identity is going to continue on after I die, unless there's like some type of quantum hiddenness that can store my conscious awareness. No, no, we're not no, having quantum. Yeah, we're, we're exhausted on the quantum <laughs> talks today. We've done enough. Like, unless so, it's I about mean, quantum one of, lobsters one of or something. Fundamental like parts of being like the point of being a christian is that your eternal soul lives forever right he's not listening to you he's talking 
Oh, so, okay. Mike, Mike, I want you to stop for a second. Katie, can since he wasn't listening, Mike, will you? But one will of you the do... yeah, good. One of the like core things about being a Christian, the reason that I might want to become a Christian is because your eternal soul lives on forever. I mean, that's like the whole point, isn't it? That's that's why you would want to believe in Jesus, so that you, some part of you, something about you exists on forever. That's that's what that's like the main claim in Christianity. No, the same, the same people that will judge Katie, the I'm same listening. people that will judge you, would call me a heretic and say I'm going to hell. I don't. I don't. You're you're evading. You're evading the actual point of, yeah. of what she's trying like, to talk about. If you want to call yourself a Christian, but you think that God came into existence at some point, and also you don't go to heaven, and there's no eternal forgiveness, and your soul doesn't carry out. I mean, what is left of Christianity? What what makes you a Christian if you don't have like the fundamental Christian beliefs? Good point. I'll tell you. For me. There's only really it's registering. One, it's when, when the lawyer asked him, what's the greatest commandment? And we all know what that is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you've done this, you've done all of the law and the prophets. You don't need a Bible. Do you live by that truly for all human but beings? That, where did you get that quote from? You got it from the Bible. So you do need you do need the Bible just for that bit. But then there's more in the Bible. And the Bible's like the whole point in doing this is that you live forever. The Bible takes, I'm not and that God has already been around forever. They're like that. Like, this forever thing is a real Bible thing. <laughs> Caught in both directions. God has existed forever. God will exist forever. And if you believe Jesus died for your sins, you will exist forever. They're like that's the Christiany bits. I mean, if you pick up a book and it's like, oh, here's all the ways to live life and stuff, and there's one little bit in it you like, and you disregard, disregard the rest, you're not really. I mean, you could call yourself something, but I think right. every other Christian. Let's do a quick thought experiment. And I, I no, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you something because I don't feel like you're really grasping it. So the quote is for, for God loved the world, and I'm sure you're familiar as well as, well as any former Christian. For God so loved the world that He gave He that that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Is that statement true, or is the statement true that infin that infinity the actual infinities don't exist? Which one is it? Or neither? Yeah, you're not confusing me with that, dude. I can process that information. I'm not just, trying well, to just tell you. me the answer. I, I, just I'm presenting genuine. you. Yeah, you could genuinely, you could, you could go. Here's your problem, J. Mike. Here's the issue. You're not understanding what my argument is. That doesn't affect it. And here's why: X, Y, and Z. But you're not even doing that, and you're not even, you're not even doing that. You're also not even just addressing the the fucking question I'm asking, you. and it's getting mildly frustrating. <laughs> this, 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 it's just like this. Sorry. Shall I answer the question? Yes, that I, I, I would love that. <laughs> okay, here it comes. We live in the present moment. There's a past and there is a future. The question, Mike, the question was which one of those? Not not like, oh, I want to go on yeah. to like something else. That's not what we're doing. Oh, we will go on to something else. because Yeah, because yeah, cool we're, we're getting like a ton of calls. And, and honestly, if you're not going to answer the question, I'm going to move on. And we have a really cool promo clip that is starting to sound a good one, man. more interesting than, than not getting answers <laughs> at all. <laughs> Last chance. Which one of those is true or neither? Pose your question. Pose your question. Okay. <laughs> Go for for it, God Mike. so Go loved on. the world that he that he gave his only that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Is that true? Do you believe right. that statement is true? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now you came in here with the principle saying actual infinities don't exist. How can that be simultaneously true? Because there's a difference between actual now events and future potential events. Pretty easy, J. Mike. Yeah, and so you're, this is, goes back to the distinction that I tried to say earlier, is that when you try to say that there is this yeah. distinction between the potential and the actual, you've set up something that can never actually get to the actual, especially if it's just a concept of infinity, and substituting it for a potential, which is what we mean by something going on eternally. I mean, we're just talking about the same thing. 
And if you understand set theory, Cantor's set theory, if you understand yeah. calculus and uh, the infinite series, well, then you'll have a better appreciation to approach that. I do yeah, understand and, and, set theory. And everybody, do you mean yeah. set theory? Why, you, why is this related to set theory? He's... I mean, I, do you want to do a math lesson right now? I could do it if you want. I, would, I actually no, kind of want to move yeah. Kolar, I think. Because... Well, I would prefer, I'd prefer him to, not, to recognize uh, the contradiction or at least explaining it without having to just go well you don't know and then let me list a bunch of things that people might not have heard of which by the way like um, i get you if you go into if you go into set theory there's disagreements right like this isn't just like um what is it uh prince principa mathemat i can't remember off the top of my head uh but you you have you have formulations that over time change people add people disagree this isn't something you can just cite like oh this exists like i could just say someone's a modal realist and they think that actual possible worlds exist and that wouldn't be good enough like you're not actually describing why i should care you're just saying people mm. believe this thing but uh it's a concept yes yeah, someone put it in the chat i'm, I'm just um anyway yeah, I, I believe you can be i'll tell i'll be blatantly honest with you okay j mike just so you know where i'm coming from I believe you can possibly be more, wait a minute, let me just say this. I believe you can, and I just believe this, but I believe you can possibly be more rationally situated believing in naturalism if you're like absolutely certain of causal closure, but I'm not. Um, sure. I mean, I'm familiar. Like, so actually I did a show on this earlier about uh, proposition like, or, or uh, syllogisms regarding causal uh, closure and then how you can conclude that therefore God doesn't exist in, from that perspective. But yeah, I'm, I don't take arguments like that and just go naturalism is true. I take a perspective of uh, what is what is the argue what are the arguments committing me to right? And so it seems like to me the like if I took your position and then tried to prop up the uh, the epistemic foundation to someone else and say, well, here's why you should believe. But then I'm looking at that going, well, that's actually committing you to A and not A at the same time. I don't want to accept yeah. that. That's I'm not I'm not making a statement that yeah, yeah, yeah. naturalism is true. I'm saying it natural. I'm I'm saying one well, virtue of that, like my theory of nat or uh, my theory without God, yeah, without exactly. positing this extra think, ontological entity, fits way better than having to add that and contradict myself in the process. But um right. but, I mean this could just kind of deflection, isn't it? Because it doesn't really matter what Mike or I think, because you've come in with two statements and they are contradiction that's it that's the, like there just needs to be a resolution here or you're wrong even if we're also wrong yeah. maybe everyone is wrong but you're wrong for sure because you made two contradictory statements Choose some problems, my dear mine might tell you the problems with the language as well as Wittgenstein you might want to look into that a little more closely my dear um okay we're gonna move on yeah um, bye thank you though, Vic, though Wittgenstein is a good read if you ever want to just doubt like the usage of language and um and uh my my buddy uh ceased to know is huge on uh Wittgenstein so um I'm not gonna good, be convinced good read, but that a equals not a by any book about language <laughs> yeah and then you also have to like take the same principles and go well if I'm supposed to be doubting like language in this way should I be what this book says should i be taking that like should that be convincing me you know so it's like yeah this whole other issue this book will convince you that this book will not convince you of anything All right you get three <laughs> philosophers in the room and they'll tell you that there's not three philosophers in the room um anyway we are gonna move. choice we are going to move on to and it's awesome. quite a lot of interesting ones here well, well, first, before we move on to callers we have an awesome clip if you guys have missed things that have been going on in the aca this week from uh sexual sex bleh, i always i always have a tongue twister on this but it's okay i've already told myself today that i'm flobbing words so it's okay i'm allowed to at this point if you're uh, familiar with the aca and uh, shows like secular sexuality talk heathen truth wanted atheist experience nonprofits, and you didn't check it out this week check out this clip because here's what you possibly missed <laughs> Now that I'm like this sort of pseudo quasi celebrity uh, with the uh, Atheist Experience Network, I have thought about whether or not I should go back and maybe get rid of that old Twitter account. I like, look, I, I really like the idea of a Victorian girl just like coming back from the dead just to yep. say that you're cute. I think yeah. that's great. We have one Xenia of Chinikova. She 
is suing McDonald's for 1,000 rubles, which is about $13. The fact yeah. that you think you can f***ing sidestep the rigorous standards we apply in science because it suits your your presumption in the first place is not my f***ing problem. It's not working. In fact, yeah. you're you're only hardening my heart, much like God hardened the Pharaoh's heart. And, and I don't want a calcified heart. I, I'm going to need it later. There is like a 99% chance that after Johnny said that he drank from his little spoon cup or whatever it is. If you <laughs> notice, if you haven't noticed, Katie, like, watch him on shows. He like, I don't think he's really drinking anything. I think he's just putting his mouth to the end of a spoon. Oh, just doing that. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like a spoon, but he claims it's a straw. I don't know, but 95% chance he did that right after that clip. But um, I'm drinking out of a... Uh... A download curling cup, which is green on it, so it's so it's going. So that's a it's a lobster the crab color. for it. Like, crab, crab. Oh, I'm never gonna get lobsters and crabs right. This is lobsters ridiculous. have long tails, and crabs' tails are curled around underneath. So and that's where they hold the eggs. So when they lay eggs, they lay them on the, on the tail, and they hold them under their body like this. Yeah, well, if I can even get the like layman terms for a crab and a lobster, let alone like you know. Anything Layman else? terms for a crab is a pinchy boy. A pinchy. Well, yeah, I get you're right. That's 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 much. So I actually technically they they could both be pinchy. Boys, well, lobsters so. are long pinchy boys. So, well, this is the time where we, because <laughs> I am going to add something to this conversation that makes me look even more inept at uh, the thing that. So I'm trying to go in for bioinformatics, okay? And I'm like ruining any chance <laughs> in any department right now by not understanding like what a crab and a lobster is and so we'll just yeah anyway it is time for the top patrons of the week and i said patron and not patreon i'm very happy about that sometimes i do that uh if you aren't aware you can go to patreon.com slash talk heathen to me and become a uh, patron our top five uh, or actually six for the week is going to be eric tweet cj dennis dingleberry jackson hold on <clears throat> well it's not yeah. my it's not my normal one Dingleberry Jackson, everybody. There we go. Balaam's donkey, Paul, Leah, and the honor honorary mention of the great North American Dingaloo, who I finally learned how to pronounce that name as well. So, um, but we are running a little bit on time in terms of I want to get more callers in. Um, so let's go to the another ball. theist and get Gabriel. Gabriel from the Caribbean sounds exotic. Uh, wants to talk about his reasons for believing in God and wants to see if me or Katie think that they're logical. Uh, go ahead and give Hi. us your reasons, and then uh, I'm interested in hearing uh, Katie's perspective first. Hey, um, good afternoon um, to one and all. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me, yeah, hey. Um, for example, say you see, just getting straight into it, say you are on the road, and you see a baby crawl from around a corner, a dumpster, or whatever. Your first notion, are you going to assume that the baby um, material, like materialized behind the dumpster, or the it just appeared, or would you assume that it had parents and it was misplaced? I need to see first how you, um, I guess, see things. So it sounds like you're Would you... potentially going to do the argument from the design, but I will play along for now. Um, no, no, no. If I saw a baby, I would assume that that baby was born from a, a pairing of humans because that's what every single baby that we've ever encountered is from in history has done. So every single baby I've ever seen right. in my life has come from, it has been born. So if I saw another random baby, that is what I was would assume. Do you think that seems reasonable? Yes, and and all evidence and um, I guess um, scientific um, tests or whatever are done prove that that's where babies come from. So, all right, say that we are going back further now and further. And further. Well, well, hold on, hold on. So you, you don't even have to you don't have to do that. Like this is this is based on what we know, it's an implicit empirical basis, right? So we have this implicit basis because we've experienced it. We've seen it. We've witnessed it. Some of us have right. uh, got born that, myself, right? actually. Yeah, right. Some of us have been born, believe it right. or not. Uh, <laughs> but, 
and that's not a slight to you just just a, just a joke but you but, have, um you but, have no recollection um, of it though. yeah but so you don't there's no there's no like you know yeah but i'm saying i agree with you i'm not disagreeing with you or anything I'm not no i know i know you're not disagreeing but i'm just saying the, the what katie's saying is that it just starts with with the experiencing and actually being able to compare you know that thing to like for example if i like had a bag of skittles or something and i poured it out it was like m m's or something right like i wouldn't be justified in assuming after some skittles came out that m m's would because i just don't have the implicit basis but it could be the case right so, that's really so, only the argument yeah is. it could be so to you do your it could be the case thing like maybe in 500 years time we'll find a way of making a baby in like some machine and then the first baby that we make in the machine, someone might walk in and they might see a baby and they'll be like, ah, oh, that baby was born because every single baby that I've ever experienced, I know was born. And then you might be like, actually, this one wasn't born. This one was created and it's different. And now you have a new piece of information and you now know that babies can come from two different places and that will change your worldview. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe you'll be able to tell the difference between them. Maybe not, who knows, but, for now, until we have our baby making machine, um, every single baby we've ever encountered has been born. So that's that is why I would go to that um, assumption. And like you were saying, we could do tests on it, but I mean, we can't test. We don't we don't test babies to see if they were born. Like that isn't actually science that we would do because it's a piece of information that we just know from. The, you know, yeah. the life and looking at things um but anyway sorry i think i think you can carry on from there i think you're agreeing with those claims yeah yeah um right so in in, in my view of things um i understand that most um belief systems have um presuppositions um but to me I think it wrong for people to for, for the information that you just gave me. Um, I think it wrong for uh, for persons to presuppose, for example, air biogenesis. You just told me that if you saw a baby, we because of what we know would assume that it had parents. So well, I wouldn't that's... assume. I wouldn't assume that a baby had just air biogenesis. Did or whatever the past tense of that word is. But if I saw if I saw like a single RNA or something in some kind of primordial soup scenario, um, I wouldn't assume that it had been born. But, uh, you're, you're, but these are different these are different things, aren't they? When when I'm looking at babies, it's in the context of human society where you know, we have babies all the time. There's a baby born every second. Yeah, you understand. Um, but no, when you, from, the time you, from the time you state RNA in a primordial soup, you're you're presupposing, you're assuming um, conditions. But well, hold on. Yeah, then, I mean, it's just an example. The, but yeah, what but I'm this, saying is that you, you're you're not, you can't just extrapolate that back and say, therefore, um, you know, a biogenesis didn't work because I know from our understanding of evolution, which has loads and loads of different pieces of evidence for, I know that some point back, it, you know, keep going back, the parents, the parents, the parents, there's a point where the ancestors aren't human anymore. So some, some you know, early human babies, it's obviously it's a gray area and it, it slowly changes over time. But if we go back like, you know, 10 million years along my genetic tree, the, the parents there aren't human um and at some point they are and at some point it's a gray area in between so you know we we're not when we're saying oh i'm seeing a baby today for sure every, you know in our sort of um time scale in our lifetimes every single baby born is going to be a human baby but over the case of millions and millions of years humans might evolve and change and we might get to the point where a human today uh and then a million years down the tree will be a different animal um, and, and it's the same with going back. So if I see a human baby, I do say, oh, that's probably come from a human because that's how I know reproduction works. But if I see a human baby, I don't say, oh, that's come from one trillion years back or whatever of, of humans. I know that it's come from a human, which has come from a human, blah, 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 a million times. And that came from some and, and let me, let me, humanoid, like 
you know, creature and so on. And then, then we get to the point where we go far back enough and we say, well, what were the earliest common yeah. forms of life? And that's where we get to this situation where we're like, oh, we have a single celled organism and we have something that's like before single celled organisms. And then we're left with a few, a few things like, oh, well, we know that we needed RNA as like a starting point. Um, that that's something that yeah. we know was a starting point, and then no. we just guess the nothing, conditions. What you just said is nothing that we know. No, no, G Gabriel. So, so let, this is where I was actually going to come in. I, I apologize. Yeah, sorry, Mike. I was on rant mode. No, Get you're it. fine. This is where I want to come in because you had mentioned the things about a biogenesis, and and I think it's relevant because you said the word. If you go back on the tape, you said presuppose. That's not the case. And, and yeah, you I'm also, not presupposing a biogenesis. Well, it's not. It's not a presupp presupposition. In, that's you know anything beyond what we have to do in science to start off with but for you to like go into like the pools and first off we have like hyperthermal vents uh we have implicit basis on i, I believe what they're called uh amphiphilic molecules they're like fatty acids um that can spontaneously form form into ordered structures it's it's a lot of like how um it's like it's like how soap works, right? This is like there's not a mysterious part of things that we have to presuppose. It's things that we actually have an implicit basis for, of uh, an empirical basis for us to make the hypotheses, right? Yeah, it is, it's empirical. It's not just like yeah, it's not like you just you just you just um, make this up, right? I mean, it's it's very similar to like the boundary of a proto cell um, or my cells or bilayers, right? And we we yeah, Mike, li we literally have um utility in this in in things like soap like things we study beyond so it's not like just comes out of nowhere you presuppose it it's a basis of of, of yeah, knowledge right. at which we apply going forward for future predictions so there's nothing there's no presupp presupposition there that's like the reason why we also wouldn't say a so baby 100... go ahead sorry i want to i want to give you a chance no, I, I yeah. yeah yeah all the all the information that all the information that you're stating about the this and that molecule, but you are stating minor little facts that people have um, investigated or found. But to leap from one point to the next, there's so much things that have to be skipped out and put into place that aren't there. That's why they cannot. But so do you do you have the same skepticism? So do you have the same skepticism, Gabriel? Do you have the same skepticism in things in cosmology like stellar nucleosynthesis? Like the idea that we can have, I have no idea. Uh, I have no so, idea. so essentially, like Wait, stars, know. stars fuse elements, right? And so, it's called uh, nuclear fission. The fancy word that I like to use is uh, stellar nucleosynthesis or big, you know, big bang nucleosynthesis. And so, essentially, like uh, nu nuclei can fuse all the way up to iron. Um, heavier elements, other than iron, uh, fuse in supernovae or novae, and so we make these predictions, but we don't actually see like, right. Like I mean, we, we do. And now in the, in the future with, with better instruments and technology, obviously, but at times, even with when we were coming up with these hypotheses, it wasn't just like coming up with nothing. It was, it was taking these little small bits of data. Like you said, they're little small bits and we add on those and make predictions based upon them. And then we get more information. We get more empirical evidence and then it grows our epistemology on why we think we should accept this versus that. Right. It's all, all of it down to what we learn um is standing on the shoulders of giants right like even from what we know from other people so uh or other or, you know other papers or things that have been published or other empirical data so i'm not really unsure of your point because the reason why i bring up the stellar nucleosynthesis you're not going to deny that right like you, you you're right you you like or do you deny that or do you like where does this stop for you because it seems that you pick a biogenesis but then you're like other things that we would have the no, Almost the exact same issue you would have, you'd probably let that fly. And I'm wondering if you're working backwards, if that's the reason. No. Um, first, I never even looked into what you just mentioned about the whole special word you just called. I honestly can't repeat it. I never looked into it. Um, well, so if, if a scientist propped that up to you, just was like, hey, there's this thing called nuclear, nuclear, nuclear stellar synth, there. Uh, stellar nucleosynthesis, and they explain to you what it was elements up to iron fuse and stars. And we have really good evidence for that based on this. Would you like, would you deny it looking at the evidence? Because it seems to me that you would if you're going to be, if you're going to be charitable to the no, to I, your I, values right I now. Investigate it. I okay, so then why do you claim that it's a presupposition for abiogenesis? That's where I'm hung up right now. 
because abiogenesis is the okay. What is abiogenesis to you, um, Jim? I don't know, but asking. So I said this to one of the other callers, like asking me a question in return. Not, abiogenesis not to me. I, 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 you, well, to you me, want... it is whatever it is to you. I'm happy to accept your definition of abiogenesis. Well, yeah. So I want exactly. I want to go off of what you're working. I don't want to cloud or evade what I'm talking about because it seems like you just want to. You want to prop up. Um, oh, you know, we we haven't gone through the rigorous processes in science for abiogenesis, but I can point out other things like the fact that we know, you know, stars fused elements. Like, like that sounds so ridiculous to some people, where they'll go, "Okay, but how do we know that?" And then they'll look into it. They go, "Okay, right? It doesn't seem to be an issue in, in cosmology. It doesn't seem to to be a, an issue there." And so I don't see, I don't do see you, why you're picking on abiogenesis. Do you agree with all scientists, there, Mike? Do you agree with all? 100% of scientists in the world, Jim. No, 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 no. all agree with each other. Not at all. Yeah, we, they, no, they completely no, disagree. There's a reason I'm asking. There's a reason I'm asking this. Which one do you agree with? The larger concept. Um, no, I, so I, I, oh, I accept, I accept the, con, the current consensus on science because it's based upon a very rigorous process of peer reviewing and weeding out the bias that I think the show does a really good job at capitalizing these biases that people have, we all have them, right? But I think some callers call in working backwards on certain things and denying things like abiogenesis and calling it a presupposition when they don't have any expertise in it, right? And so I'm going to go with the people that do have an expertise in it, but not just that, the people that have a consensus, right, where this has been reformulated to the point where there's falsification criterions, things where so, Jim, they or weed that out. The, first, the awesome. person that research, the, the scientists that research, um, or do their um, tests or whatever on air biogenesis, are you saying that these bunch of scientists have all not agreed that this air biogenesis has happened? No, no, this is no, a no, 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 that's not, that's nobody not in, right. in biochemistry even says that. This well, is, I think these, I th the, the important that's step that's here is, so, sorry, one sec, I think, I think the that's step here is that, the beginning. Um, so, so I think one, one of the steps here is, is, we like we think. I mean, I can't speak for J. Mike, but it sounds like um, we're saying that yeah, potentially abiogenesis is the case, but we don't know for sure. Um, we like we know about evolution because we have so much evidence for it. Sure. We don't know for certain with abiogenesis, but it seems like a sensible hypothesis for you know the stage we're at. Um, but. That but I think but Gabe, you know, Gabriel, I'd I, just let, please let Katie finish because you, you might be able you might be able to respond to the point better. Yeah, so the, so I think the argument usually that goes from here about the um like the abiogenesis argument is you could say oh we don't quite have enough evidence for abiogenesis to say that's a, a you know a scientific fact that's something that we um have a consensus on, but then the answer then is well we don't know. Like it's either abiogenesis, which is like our best hypothesis, or it's another hypothesis which has a lot of evidence, or we don't know. So, I mean, potentially you could say, oh, well, I don't actually trust these scientists because I'm an expert in this and I think they've made a bad assumption here. And therefore, I actually think the abiogenesis hypothesis doesn't hold up. But then you would then have to go, well, we've, we've, you know, we've got all this data still, we've just made a bad assumption, but we don't know unless you're putting forward another hypothesis which fits all the data we do have and isn't just, well, something's got to have done it, therefore it was God. Because that would be that would be like an even worse jump than for us, for me to just say a hey, biogenesis is true because we've got some evidence. It's a god of the gaps, isn't it? So I'm I'm using what I'm saying has nothing at all to do with gaps. I'm, the only thing that I was I was going to state was were facts. Okay. I asked you initially about the baby because it, this, this this the whole thing was trying to get across for the longest while. I did not mean to derail the conversation or send it all back to stars. All all I'm saying is that in my view, I have seven point seven billion reasons just of today to show that life as we know it on earth you have how many can 7.7 .7, it's just averaging billion they're talking about persons 
Yeah, I get that. I, I get the the correlation. Show well, all the all the people alive today have have been born from other humans, but that doesn't mean that all humans that have ever existed only have humans in their lineage. That's the point I made earlier. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get to where. So I know I derailed that on the abiogenesis thing because you talked about it being a presupposition, and I wanted to point out like there are certain things that you will accept absent the expertise, but then. In this instance of an absence of expertise, you you have an issue with it. It seems because because it has to do with no, no. things you believe in. But let's move on from that. What what I what mean, is anything you're saying? How does that get me? Make me a theist, Gabriel. Make me a theist. We got like 20, 20 minutes left on the show, and I'd like to be a theist at the end of it. The, oh, okay, the way I look at it, what I know, what have been proven, seven point seven billion times as of today is that life persons come from other persons or life. It does that, not come. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's always true. Let me, well, let me, well, let me this, finish, please. Wait, I, uh, finish. Humans only come from humans, but that doesn't mean that single-celled creatures let, let always finish. do. Okay, go for it. So in my view, persons have to come from another person our life. So yep. when it, but I in myself say that the only fact that I have is this. Anything else is a theory by scientists. Anything else is a something that they're not one hundred percent sure on. They're they're saying this and they're changing. Okay, let's hold on. Let's not derail it because you're gonna get me into a different derail of saying yeah. you now you now you don't accept cell theory and, and germ theory and, and, and it's nonsense, right? Going back to the same thing that I went to the stars for is to show like you apply a completely different standard for things that are inconvenient to the beliefs you hold first, as opposed to understanding it and then determining those metaphysical beliefs after the fact, because it should follow the physics, not, not have your physics try to work around that. So right. That doesn't saying, seem, yeah. but also we, we do, we do know evolution is a fact. Like, well, and, and yeah. yes, also allele frequencies. Yes. Well, allele frequencies change over time. That is a fact, right? Yeah, when we talk about that. the theory, we are talking about, the mechanism at which that occurs. And so uh, to not get on that whole tangent, what, you, what you're getting into is people come from people. Now, am I safe to assume that you're gonna extrapolate that and assume that the part gives evidence towards the whole and you're gonna say that, that that's some reason of evidence of God? Would I, be, would I be wrong to suggest that's what you're about to say? Yes. That's what I'm going to say. That. Yes, I figured it was. Are, are you familiar with? Yeah, so, okay. are you f are you familiar with the fact that a chair can have wooden legs, but it doesn't mean the entire chair is made of wood, right? You agree with that? Yep. Yep. And if I go into Walmart and I see a group of people and they're all hanging out, having a good time, and they tell me, "Hey, we're a family," and they they prove it to me, and then I go, "Oh, okay." Every other group of people in Walmart is now a family. Right? That doesn't make sense. It's a fallacy called a, a composition division fallacy. You don't get to infer the whole based upon the ho uh, upon the part. Because if you did that with the chair, you'd be wrong. It might have a plastic seat. It might not be entirely made of wood. You know, if you say that okay, a sheep had a mother, so therefore the whole flock had the same mother, it might not be the case. See, this is the thing with your this is the thing with your your um, way of looking at I guess logic and being rational that I don't understand. You can agree with scientists with the consensus that life can originate from let me say the, the rainfall on the, the rocks for millions of years and then this primordial soup we don't have a we don't have a consensus on the mechanism we that's what we're trying that, that's yeah. what we're trying to say about that abiogenesis you're but, 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 a complete category error for you to pick on that yeah. as opposed as so, opposed to something that is the consensus right you're just, you're just evolution, talking over my head you're trying to use something that's easier for you to make your point by going okay well let me pick on this thing that doesn't have an actual consensus on and and use that against j mike's point earlier that he said he goes that he does uh add validity to consensus but, well yeah but that's missing the point because okay, okay. that's not something that has that has a consensus on pick evolution instead do you do you think evolution is yeah, my, do you agree with that wait, wait, hold, hold on jamie do you accept that abiogenesis is the best um how should i put it the best theory right now for the diversity of life yes i accept uh, i accept the rna world hypothesis specifically uh, but okay, okay. i don't Okay, good. Let me speak. Right. Let me speak to well, you. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. But but at no point do I make that 
in, in a claim of certainty, right? Like you come from a position of certainty. Yeah, you believe a, you believe a God exists. You're very certain. You deal with absolutes. That's not my worldview. So of course, from your perspective, it's going to be kind of hard for you to grasp the atheist perspective, or at least my perspective. I don't want to lump us all together, but because I don't, we don't deal. Neither does science. We don't deal in absolutes. We don't deal. It's not how I, at least I deal. So it will be somewhat weird for you to probably recognize the fact that I can accept something based upon the purported evidence and that can change because it's tenable and because science is provisional, but I don't see problems with that because I'm a fallibilist, which, you know, okay. do you, do you, do, would you accept that Christ was crucified, was buried three days later, he rose from the dead, his dead life, his dead body. Right. No, I would not. I came back to life. Would I'm you? not convinced of any individual part of that. I, I'm not even necessarily convinced Jesus w w walked the earth. I'm not a mythicist, yeah, I'm but not I'm, not, I'm not necessarily even convinced. Let's, so. let's say anybody, let's say anyone, any person at all died, they rose, would you accept that? And tell me what you would or wouldn't. No, 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 I wouldn't. Because I have no implicit empirical basis for people rising from the dead. The same way if you told me that you have a flying leprechaun in your car that's trapped and you want to help me come get it out. I'm not going to accept that claim until you show me the evidence because it's not my problem. Okay, so would you, okay, what would, what would this one? Would you believe that all the animals on Earth could fit into Noah's Ark? I, I, I strongly disagree with that. I'm convinced that that is impossible okay. yeah. for a number of reasons. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you, would you accept that all we, of How many more of these we go? I mean, we just, because we got two of us to concede the, the point. Will last, you just move on yeah. to the point? This is the last one. This is the last one. Do you, agree, would you accept that all the planets, the sun, the stars, all the energy and matter will squeeze into a dot smaller than a period on a page? Like smaller than a, a dot at the end of a page? I don't, I don't do know that? where my position is on that. That's not, that's not my position to make. I'm not in that field. Uh, look, I'm done with Q and A time. Do you want to get to the point? Well, saying, because I, uh, because, saying, because listen, because Gabriel, because listen, you called in, and the note is you wanted to give your reasons for believing God and wanted to know if the hosts think that it's the reasons are logical. Literally, the reason you gave me is a logical fallacy called a composition division fallacy. So no, I don't think the it's no. logical because you literally committed a fallacy. Because I commit a fallacy. It just answers your question. You called in to see if we thought that his reasons were logical. My opinion is that it's literally illogical. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, if you can have a better inference rule, then um, this chair has four legs, so therefore the whole chair is made of wood. Or that, that I looked at 3,000 chairs, and they're all made of wood, so every other one's going to be. That's just, to me, very sloppy reasoning, because clearly we can find an example where that where those inference rules do not follow, right. where I you go, hey, not, the part of the whole doesn't work. It's not even just the logic. This I isn't just even hypothetical. It. We can just look and know for a fact because the evolution is a thing that's happened and not every single one of my ancestors ever has been a human. Like we, we go back and, you know, five generations, 10 generations, they're all humans. We go back 500,000 generations and they stop being humans. And that, like, we just know that, that we know that's, true so you know we can we can look at the logical uh, thing but, here but we can also just look at the evidence Thank you very much. okay you guys answer my question uh, okay. no more no 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 more q a just give me the reason or i'm moving on to one more call because i'm not wasting time on q a it's like q a it's like national q a day I'm, I'm like over it i just want to have people present the reasons why they believe in a god yeah. i'm done i'm done you guys answered my question so i'm done all right well gabriel i yeah, sorry for being harsh on it, man, but it's just like, I, I don't, I, I see why it's frustrating for some other hosts when someone doesn't directly answer questions. I'm guilty of it myself, but it's, there was like several times where questions were asked that I don't feel like were being answered. And then you asked if it was illogical, I gave the reason, and then you had a problem with it. But it was like, well, I don't know why you would call in to see if we thought it was illogical. I'm going to give you the, the answer to it. But anyway, let me uh, try to sneak one in or if you, if you, uh, if you're if you're down, Katie. I'm I'm down. Whatever. Let's do it. Sweet. I'm gonna talk to my best friend in the entire world. Otangelo, you are on. With you Katie. Are on. Katie. Oh, and you need to get off speakerphone. Yes. Hello, uh, Katie. Hello, J Mike. Thanks Hi. for taking my call. Of course. Hey, so here I have a question for you both. 
let's suppose you. <sighs> Why? Well, no, Angelo, I don't want any more questions. Just g- give me the arguments. I'm done with questions. Questions can happen next time I'm on. No, no more questions. Okay, the argument is a little bit longer, but let's go with the syllogism then. Organisms are constantly exposed to different environments and in order to survive, require to be able to adapt to external conditions. Two, life in order to perpetuate has to replicate. That includes DNA, which must be replicated with extreme accuracy. Somehow, the cell knows when DNA is accurately replicated and when not. There are extremely complex quality control mechanisms in place, which constantly... They're not perfect, right? They're, they're good, but they're not perfect. Can I finish? Can I finish? Well, yeah, you can. I'm just, I'm just cutting in there just to... Argument, please. That. It's, a di- it's a dialogue, no, Otangelo. Like finish the argument. You asked me not to ask a question, so okay, I... T- 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 you're I up to... Okay. Otangelo, you're out of 10. Just get back to a three and just keep going. Yeah. We're okay. It's not That's the good. I was just, just adding to what you were saying. Just adding a little fact. You can carry on now. Well, I would like to finish the argument, and then you can... Otan- yeah, Otangelo, finish Different. the argument. I don't, I don't care about getting into, an, like, the 20th thing between you and I. Just, just give the argument. <laughs> Oh, have you got history? <laughs> At least three error check and repair mechanisms keep error during replication down to one error in 10 billion nucleotides replicated. The repair yeah. mechanisms, sophisticated proteins, are also encoded in DNA. So proteins are required to error check and repair DNA, but accurately replicated DNA is necessary to make the proteins that repair DNA. So that is an all or nothing business. Therefore, the, these sophisticated systems had to emerge all at once and require a designer. Um, so I, I asked you this question um, the last time, and I, you said it was irrelevant, but I want to know. So like the idea that a particular core of the ribosome is also a self I think I misspoke, but is also a self-replicating uh, ribozyme. Is that relevant to your argument? Because I feel like it would be. No, it is not relevant. Well, how, how is it not? Because it seems to be the basis of your argument. Well, because the, the, the error check and repair mechanisms, they are extremely comp- complex and fully functional proteins. And if they are unable to recognize errors in DNA replication, then they will, will not perform the function that they have. So you have to have them fully up and uh, able to function right from the beginning. Um, that's not true. So, it, cells can change. You could change a small piece of DNA and it could just carry on exactly the same because it might not affect its function or it could just make it function slightly worse or slightly better. Like, it doesn't have to be 100% replication to, for the, to the organism to survive. And also, you have like 100 trillion cells or whatever. One of them could go wrong. I mean, that's, that is what happens to people. That's, you know, cancer. Um, one could go wrong and you could carry on living for years. So, Well, I am talking here in a, a, of an abiogenesis scenario where you have to explain the origin both of DNA, of its replication. But you could, you yes. could have a situation. We... You could easily have a situation where be... they didn't have the checking mechanisms to happen in the first place. So in... the checking mechanism has evolved over time along with everything else. Ota- Otangelo, Otangelo, Katie is responding. Just shut up for two seconds, dude. Jesus. Like... So you're you're asserting that we've got these checking mechanisms, which mean that it only goes wrong one in 10 billion times or whatever. But there's no reason why we had those to start. They evolved over time too. Um, you know, the first the first ever replication could have easily just not had that. As I explained, if you have not accurate DNA replication right from the beginning, then you have a far too high mutation rate, and the product will be non-functional proteins. And and you have this based on simple precursors. How exactly? How exactly did no, I'm you not determine convinced. The, pro- the probability? I, that seems really odd to me. I mean, well, if you're saying if you're determining that it, it could be outcome X versus outcome Y based on certain factors, I'm genuinely curious how you've solved like, you know, uh, issues with uh, precursors to proteins and things of that nature. Where now you're like, you're not even. 
I don't know how you're you're demonstrating the probability of such, right? This seems to be a huge part within uh, biochemistry to even figure out that you seem to like have the answer and say, well, if it was this way, it would produce this. But I'm I'm not sure that biochemists are even ex expressing that level of hubris like you are, at least. Scientific fact, which we know that if you don't have these repair mechanisms in the get-go, fully functional right from the beginning, then the error rate will be far too high. And you how do you how do you how do you know, Otangelo? What example do you have at the beginning at which you could observe and know that that is the case? Or what is the yeah. novel predictions from an indirect observation basis at which you can make that conclusion? And don't cite me your blog for the twentieth time. What is the actual evidence? Now let's let's start from the supposition then there would so suddenly appear a fully functional protein on prebiotic earth okay so what would what would happen going from there uh, your, it's your argument you tell me <laughs> Yeah, no questions. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yes, I'm not like here to play twenty questions. Just tell me what the the evidence. It would simply disintegrate because a protein on its own has no function. Proteins they only work in a joint venture together with other proteins and with metabolic networks. Are you, are you, so you're saying that they're just non-functional to anything? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you extrapolate that point to what exactly? I'm trying. I'm trying to follow your your logic. What I am saying that uh, life and the first living cell is an all or nothing business. You have to have all the parts in place and starting to function right from the beginning. And if you don't have just one protein, so, of a minimum. Well, so, so hold on, hold on. So like you would you wouldn't agree like with. Um, like catalytic functions of um, ribozymes or anything like that, or polymerizing on hot clay, like you would disagree with that? Or is that, or is that not, I'm, I'm trying to, because it seems like you're working from a basis at which different models, whether it be like um, RNA world hypothesis, or, and I'm not, I'm not great in abiogenesis by any means, but it seems like you're starting from a framework at which, like if I just cite something like RNA world hypothesis, it just disagrees with the statements you make. I don't know how we make progress from there because it's just like a he said, she said thing, but you don't actually have the evidence and the side that I'm on is like actually doing work. You know, it seems like if we took like a meme of it, it's like they're working in a lab and you're on your phone, like on the <laughs> toilet researching things. You know what I mean? It seems to just, it seems to be you're assuming things that other models don't agree with. Well, someone doing work in a lab that means nothing. The, the, the RNA hypothesis has not been proven by any means. And okay. um, I kind of want to, you know, we're going to end the show on, on, on Otangelo saying that that doesn't matter because I've lost a lot of respect for somebody that's like, my work at my house online means a lot, but the work that people actually do where they create models and predictions and have a falsification criterion and go, hey, I have this paper, I want you to scrutinize it to the best ability. You know, Once they do that, it's like, oh shit, let me go back to the drawing board. If you don't have that approach, and then you're also saying, what well, does it matter? I was like, I guess I get why you believe in God so easily and under such flimsy notions of, of, uh, of epistemic uh, responsibility. I, I, it just seems so odd to me. Katie, uh, I feel like I'm going to no, lose it today. So, so I'll get your so opinion good. before before we close out the show on it. So yeah, bring, I, me I, up. I, bring my mood up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring your mood up. Um, oh, no, I've got to think of something good. <laughs> I know what I can do. I can show I can show you my T-shirt. I actually showed you before it went, but I just got this from a music festival. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, I think it's good for this show, but I was going to wear it. Satan but... is real, by the way, but you know, <laughs> people can't read backwards. Then, oh no, it's. I think it's forwards now. I think we're in forwards. Maybe. Is it? I I was like, anyway, I was looking at the other camera. So let's see. Oh, okay. But, yeah, we, I have uh, the fancy two two camera up. But anyway, guys, I want to uh, first off thank the crew who gives us the opportunity to do the show. If we couldn't do this, me and Katie would be thank talking you. in our room to nobody. So let's give the crew cam. Uh, right up and there. And to the cats as well, all the cats Sweet. in the crew, especially. Especially Vern's, always doing Yay. its lovely job sleeping. 
Um, and yeah, so we just want to thank the crew. Uh, crew does everything. If you can in the chat, hit that exclamation point crew, show them some love. They do, they do everything. And I've, I watched this, I won't say what it was, but I watched this thing, uh, where they went back and they showed how the, the producers were directing everything live. And it was it, doing the show here and seeing that it's given me a perspective on like how much work that is. And when it's art, you know, when you see it on a professional level, like what I got to see, um, and so I, I have a immense, immense amount of respect. I just want a put, lot of love for them. We should put, do our I love put rings. them over. Yeah. I'll put them over as much as we can. So love rings on the screen. Um, and Katie, where, where can people find you? I mean, I know now you're, you're a host, but so this yeah, you can cool. find me at talk Haven. Yay. Yeah. Um, you can also, uh, check me out on YouTube. If you search for Katie Montgomery, my name, uh, I've got a show where I argue about, um, trans rights and another like trans rights news show. And you can also find me on Twitter where I am relentlessly a dickhead 24 seven all the time because I'm addicted to it. And you can come and argue with me in real life. How exciting. It seems to be like the MO of Twitter. Like that it seems to be like allowed, uh, you know, you can do that yeah. and get, get away. If you're with not it. an aggro dickhead, you're wasting your time basically. I mean, you're I, wasting I your time even there. more if you are. <laughs> I'll have to get on there so I can exercise that right. Um, come brawling, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so yeah, we want to thank the viewers as well. Uh, anyone that's essential worker, if you're out there doing Ubers, DoorDashes, uh, I think there's the grocery thing now. You can get your groceries, whatever it is, taxi, cab, uh, nurses, doctors, everything. If you're an essential worker out there, uh, it's getting really bad with with the variation. Oh, Hopefully, all of you. Right now. Uh, it's well, you, the it's bad in the where i'm at because people don't believe in vaccinations really around here so i've been trying to stay as much indoors as possible or with people i know that are that are vaccinated um but yeah so we we want to we want to extend that thank i was an uh, an essential worker i was an uber driver for a while and uh yeah and i can't i can only imagine having to do that during COVID and, and all that so we thank you if you do if you don't believe this is your community and if you do believe we don't hate you. We're just not convinced. See you next time. Bye. We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash yttw and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash calltw.